Hello, my name is Matteo and in this video we are going to look at the ways that we can leverage all these React applications that we first made and uh, the key in making those React applications were, were to one have a built NPM script that uh, can be used. Uh, we didn't take care of that because we forked the template and uh, then the second part was altering the, J, the widget.json uh, file inside of each one of the, of the applications so we can get more metadata about those. The second thing that we did was to create a widget registry which gave us a URL for the feed. And uh, now uh, we're going to jump into Drupal. I have a local installation under this URL and uh, this is running Umami with some of uh, the modules that I maintain and that I that I use for, for these kind of purposes for demos. So what you want to do is do something like composer require Drupal widget instance, widget type, and widget ingestion. Um, in fact, I believe that you don't need to add widget type because that's a dependency on these other two. So uh, we'll see in a minute what these modules do, but uh, just keep in mind that a widget type will deal with ingesting or making a replica inside of Drupal as entities of each one of the entries in that JSON feed. So it will just take the data from that JSON and create some entities uh, with it that then will be used to generate the Drupal libraries that are attached to the page in order to render the applications. So uh, that takes care of that part. Then there is the uh, the instance part, the widget instance. Uh, each time that you embed um, a widget, a widget definition, uh, you create an instance, uh, which is another entity. Uh, it has a reference on the type, so it knows how to render each one of the, of the widgets. And um, and finally, there is the widget ingestion uh, module, which just makes the requests to the JSON object, uh, sorry, the JSON feed that we talked about, and uh, puts uh, everything in its place and allows you to uh, do manual overrides, etc. So, uh, going back to Drupal, uh, once you have that uh, downloaded and installed, if you go under content, there is new menu here called interactive components and um, in here you'll see that you have links to the different modules that are in this ecosystem if in the future there are more modules they, they will show up here and uh, let's take a look at the widget types. Uh, here you have a list of all of the widget types and then you can uh, have like the typical field UI and then you have a settings screen that we'll take a look in a moment. And then we have widget instances, uh, same same deal, nothing here, and widget ingestion settings. So I just uh, made this uh, I, I just edit that out so you can see the process. So you would come here, paste the the link that we showed uh, the other day, and here in the in the boilerplate, I have a link ready here for Sandbox. So I copy the link location. Uh, there we go, and I paste it here. So I save the configuration and now nothing happens because we need to let cron run or we can go here and go to ingest widget definitions now. So uh, we are posed with the, the ingest button and force ingestion. This is useful uh, when you want to make sure that you re-ingest all of your widgets and that's, uh, that's because every cron run will try to check for new widgets but only will ingest new widgets if the new version if the version coming from the json uh, document is newer than what you have in drupal uh, so clicking ingest will not do anything if there are no versions but sometimes it's useful to just 
ensure that you actually get uh, what's there because you've been, I don't know, maybe messing with uh, data in, in your local or wherever. So you could click here. So right now we don't have anything, so we'll ingest it. Uh, we'll ingest everything anyways. So uh, let's let's do it. So we just uh, it took four seconds to ingest these three widgets that we have there. So going back here to the widget types, uh, we'll see them. Uh, in there so you can see that the versions are the ones that we expect and you'll see that the, the directory here uh, is different for the example widget and for the uh, emojis and calculator and that's because here in the settings I have uh, I, I had before uh, I started the video uh, set this configuration uh, to download the assets for all of the widgets except for the example widget and that means that we're going to go to the github pages and uh, we're going to serve whenever we are embedding the example widget we're going to have the page serve the widgets from the remote location but for the other widgets that we have we're going to download those assets into the sites files directory and we're going to have Drupal serve them. So you can choose uh, the strategy that works best for you. Uh, sometimes it will make sense uh, one or the other. So go into the settings and choose uh, what you need. Um, but uh, that will allow us to have um, widget instances. But how do we put widget instances in pages. So let me show you. I have a testing page here. Uh, and this is a just a regular basic page that I made a, a small change. Uh, let me show you. I added uh, an entity reference called uh, fill widget instance, uh, which as you might expect, as you might expect, it's of type widget instance. So by doing that, uh, sorry, by doing that, uh, we are have we're allowing pages to have. Uh, sorry, I'm losing myself here. All right, we are allowing pages to have a reference to a widget instance. I'll go back to side widgets. If I go here and edit this, then I get this um, now I I added in the in the form display uh, I added a um, content browser uh, for creating the widget instances but uh, the main idea is that you come here and you can create a widget instance right away so uh, we are adding for each basic page the ability to have their uh, widget instance uh, in this case, uh, let me go to the example widget because the example widgets have what is called display options. With that, what that means is that we've been talking about how uh, widgets have the ability to take in editorial capabilities, and this was done here in the. Uh, this was defined here in the widget JSON, uh, not for the calculator, but we do have an example for the. Uh, where is it? Example widget. And widget.json. We defined the button text and uh, we said it was a string and uh, we gave it a description. So that is now going all the way to Drupal and as having button text and some random string uh, is put here. And you can have editors type that. Remember how we said that when embedding a widget that needs editorial input, well, we needed to to have that generated. So that's um, and we were generating these options here. So that's what I'm talking about. So here, um, let's say I am configurable, and let's say and translatable because widget instances are translatable. So not only you can have with React internationalization the interface text being translated for your 
for your widgets, but also everything that you type in as an option can be translated uh, because uh, Drupal is multilingual and uh, widgets are as well. That's, uh, that's important. So I selected uh, a widget instance that will show like a little uh, call to action with a button and the button will have the text that I just typed in. So I'm going to save this translation and I am going to go down here and you can see that this is just rendering. This is a JavaScript application. You just went through and rendered a JavaScript application by adding an entity reference field and pasting a JSON object there. And now your your editors have the ability to do so. So uh, these are uh, call to action. Uh, this is part of the uh, of the widget and this is the field label in Drupal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use Layout Builder to configure this uh, a little bit. Uh, and by the way, this works with Layout Builder, but also works with any uh, other way of rendering uh, Drupal. All right, we got rid of that title. That was, was bothering me a little bit. Um, but you can do you can do more stuff like uh, let's go to the custom block library in block layout and I created a custom block type created a uh, called widget block and what I did as you might expect I cre I added a field uh, widget instance an entity reference to a widget instance that gets um, just the um, the input with an inline entity form, you could use uh, anything else, and this just renders the entity. So the block will render the entity that you select using the inline entity form. So uh, how that plays out is that if I come here and I click on layout, I can create like for all pages or for, sorry, uh, for all basic pages, I am going to have a um, a nice section, uh, maybe two column, and this is just layout builder. This is not uh, for the the widgets, but I'm going to kind of take advantage of this. And ah, uh, I I just did it wrong, didn't I? All right, I'm gonna do it the other way around. So I'm gonna put the body here. And maybe uh, the widget instance field will be at the end, and then the links will be here. So I'm going. I'm playing with um. I'm playing with um with the layout here with the intention that I can add here a custom block, a widget block, and I can uh, add a calculator, as we as we saw earlier, and you can just add that and then maybe after the calculator I want to also make sure that all pages regardless of what they have in their content uh, they also have the nice uh, this would be the call to action and here I can uh, put all pages should have this Something, something like that. All right, and then I'm gonna save the layout, and now all pages except the ones that are overridden will will have that. Uh, so let me go back here, and in of course since I I am overriding this one, uh, it won't show up. But if I create a page, uh, let's go and add content. All right, lorem ipsum, and I'm gonna make this publish. I'm not gonna select the widget instance. I just want to see the sidebar blocks uh, being added. So you can see the lorem ipsum, and then the sidebar blocks, and just the functioning calculator and the CTA here, and that's pretty much it. Um, now you can do anything. Like if you were to put an embed here, you could just embed a widget instance 
uh, because it's an it's an entity and therefore you could render the widget type which is the one that has all of the all of the JavaScript definitions and libraries attached to it. So the widget type has the JavaScript definitions uh, and the CSS uh, as assets assigned to it as libraries, Drupal libraries, and the widget instance has a reference to that, plus all the editorial input that m may com might come with, um, uh, with, with that. And I think that with it, I just wanna put a calculator in here because I think that's so much fun. And then I'm going to be done. Add calculator. Look at that. That's it. Um, I hope that this wraps everything up and that you can start asking questions, playing with this, and coming up with nice little reusable applications to share with the community so I can get those and add them to my widget registry. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, let's keep collaborating. Ta-da!